everybody, welcome to another June of the Month. Happy April, it's finally spring, at least sort of where I am, hopefully also where you are. This month I have for you a polka. Oh my gosh, we have not done a polka in like ages and ages. As a matter of fact, I think we've only done one other polka on June of the Month, so it's like way overdue. Um, the polka I have for you today is Irish, uh, and it's one of those tunes that I do not know the name of, so if you happen to know, please do put it in the comments below or send me an email. I always love finding names to tunes that I don't know the name of. Uh, I do know, however, that this is very cool and very fun to play. Um, so here it is. and we're going to dive in. So, as you were probably hearing, uh, this is a very short tune. It's a, uh, it's a single construction tune, so rather than being eight bars each section that repeats, it's actually only four bars each section that repeats. So it's super simple to learn and very repetitive. Um, there are two pieces of good news with this. One, you can learn it in like two minutes, as we're about to. Two, as you probably heard me uh, playing with it, this is a great tune to kind of play around with, improvise over, um, construction variations on, and you know, we've been on a little variation making kick with uh, Tune of the Month in the past few videos, so we're gonna continue that today and look at some ideas of how to kind of spruce this polka up and, and play with the figuration. But first, of course, you need the tune. We're in A minor. And uh, you heard as I played it fast, uh, polkas can be played in a whole range of tempos. I play a pretty, um, like, I don't know the word, peppy, a peppy polka. I like the up tempos, but you could certainly take it down a notch. What they all have in common is a little emphasis on the offbeat one. Two, 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 right? So it's, you're going to give a little more energy to those up bows. Here we go, the first part. That's the whole A section, I'll repeat it. Alright, so that was a little slower. And you, you hear her, I'm kind of uh, oofing those up bows a little bit to give the offbeat feel, especially when it's slow. Alright, so that first part, you probably already heard it goes up the scale. That's part one. Part two works its way back down to a G chord. That's that down part. I'll do it again. Part two, turn around. And at the moment, I'm slurring those fast notes. Sorry, I slurred it wrong the first time. I slur all the way to the offbeat. can also play that all separate. Right? And then I would need the cross slur coming out of it, which we did in past polka uh, video. And then we go back to part one. And here's the ending. Starts the same way as the turnaround. But lands on the A. Wow, it's simple. Let's do the whole A section slowly. You choose your bowing over the turnaround. Here we go. And... So 
go back and practice that a few times. You can turn off the video and do it yourself. You can rewind the video and do it with me, but get real comfortable with it. And unpause. Let's do the B section. I'm assuming you paused the video to practice. Of course you did. All right. B section, really, really fun. I'll do it slowly. of course it's so short okay so you obviously hear the fun about this B section is the spicy harmony that's built into it right um, so it, it walks up a chromatic scale in the bass right going from E to F natural that's the spice that we don't expect then F sharp extra spicy and then we end up back at it um, so that's really the only thing that changes on top of each of those bass notes you're gonna put this little theme It's just uh, A, B, C, B, A, right? It's a, a little cold cross buns kind of thing if you do that. <laughs> so here I go. I'm going to start with E in the bass. And I come back to the bass. Now you notice to get the offbeat feel in this uh, section, I am choosing to use the cross bowing. We've talked a little bit about crossbowing in past tunes of the month, so if that's a new term to you or you're not sure what I'm on about, you can go back and check uh, where we went over it in detail. But basically, I'm slurring against the downbeat. happens in fiddle tunes all the time changes a little bit at the end so this is the bass in F sharp I'll do it so you hear that moment where it goes up the scale to get to the ending instead of going back down to the F sharp like the other groups did I'll do it again F sharp group one left hand ornament I'm using in this in the ending. Do you hear that flap? I'm flapping with my third finger there, but you could obviously choose another finger. Again, flaps have been discussed at length in many previous Tune of the Month videos, so if you're new to them, you can go back and check out that news uh, and grab a couple other cool tunes while you're at it. And that's the whole tune! Oh my gosh, it's just so short! Let's do the whole B section. tune as you play through the B section. Raise your eyebrows every time the bass note changes and everybody gets a huge kick out of it. I raise my eyebrows pretty much off my forehead every time I perform this and uh, yeah everybody always gets a kick out of it including me. Okay so that's the bass tune. You can now pause the video, practice it all you like, get really comfortable. Uh, shouldn't take that long. And now that you've unpaused the video, <laughs> I'm making a lot of assumptions today but yeah I, you guys know how to learn tunes. Let's look at some ideas how we can play with this. We just finished the B section, so why don't we just stay right there for a second. I'll show you some of my favorite ways to play around with it to give you ideas. This is not the limit to what you can do with this tune. There is no limit. You can get as crazy as you like. You can stay as close to the tune as you like. It's totally up to your personal taste of things, how you feel about traditional Irish tunes that are a little weird. Um, I like to get a little weird, but not too weird. So I have two big tricks that I like to do with this B section. The first thing, I mean, we talked about this in the past tune of the month. When you're making variations, there's really two things you can do. You can put extra notes in, or you can take notes out. I do both. So uh, let's first put notes in. It's really fun and easy because the B section is so patterned. So we have this thing. That top. It's just up and down the scale. Well, there's a polka rhythm that's really 
common, the little 16th notes, right? Da 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 We all know that sound, right? So couldn't we just put that rhythm in and extend the scale like this? And then of course the last group that changes, I don't variate that. Did you see how I did that? just literally went one note further in the scale and applied the polka rhythm and it works really great. Do the whole section with the added notes. Two, three, and E. That's a great way to play with it. And you wouldn't have to do that every time. You, there are two opportunities to do it every time you repeat the B section. You could do both, you could do one or the other or none. Already that's a lot of variation. Okay, so if you could put notes in, you could also take notes out. I love to do this, I do this every time I perform it. Usually the second time through the tune when people expect me to go nuts. Instead I do this. notes that make everybody raise their eyebrows. Don't we want to hear more of those? I know I want to hear more of those. And I'm adding the, the context of the harmony by playing it against my A drone. And so how I'm doing that, it's a, essentially a, a clave rhythm. One, two, three, one, two, three. slidey in my left hand. That's not untraditional. Don't overdo it, but a little bit of ring doesn't hurt anybody. <laughs> All right. And you notice how I'm using the bowing there. I have a long down, down, and I'm going to uh, use that hook three thing we've been talking about. Right? The take notes out, the regular tune, and the extended scale with the fast polka rhythm, you got a lot of variation in that B section. And you haven't even really touched the notes. This is playing purely with rhythm, and then the notes follow. So you can play with lots of other things in the uh, B section, but let's jump over to the A section for a second because there's kind of a cool thing that happens uh, that I like to do with the A section, and that's play with the figuration. Right, the uh, the way that the notes jump because there's there's a big jump in this A section melodically, right? It's playing with that range. That's a long, oh, long. <laughs> That's a big interval to move in such a short span of time, right? It's two polka measures, which is like the equivalent of one real measure, because uh, polkas are in two four. So. We can play with how we get there, and we can play with how we get down. And a lot of what I like to do in this A section and in many other polkas is to take that fast polka rhythm that we played with in the B, and putting in groups of four sixteenth notes. And then letting the fingers just kind of do whatever they need to do to make sure that that group happens. Right? So in the A section, I like to keep the beginning pretty intact. Now, here in the turnaround, couldn't I, right? I couldn't I make that first group into a polka 16th? And then I end up kind of in a weird place and I end up improvising my way out of it. All right, I now have four quarter notes to get back to that, right? And I play it differently every time, but it's a controlled improvisation. I only have four sixteenth notes, and I have to land the down. Uh, sorry, four eighth notes, and I have to land the downbeat after it on this A because that's the part one. All right. So if I, I'll do an example here. Part one. Sixteenth. Right, and then I. 
could do the same thing in the ending. And did you hear how my ending came out totally differently, even though I played the same formula? Part one, four sixteenth notes, which in this case always go. Right? And then I fill in four blanks. Blank, 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 blank. Part one. and you only get three blanks in the ending because you have to land there. Does that make sense? I'm describing it a little bit like super nuts and bolts and you can see me kind of thinking about how the tune might lay out if I were to write it out. And then I like I almost think of it like gene splicing, <laughs> weirdly, that if you had a sequence of, uh, of peptides and uh, you don't want to disrupt the whole strand, you would just take like two of them and splice them in with two slightly different things. In this case, it's four eighth notes that we're splicing in. And really, whatever you play doesn't matter so long as you land the next part one on time. So it's a really great exercise in improvisation to practice slowly part one, sixteenths, blank, 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 land the next part one. I said, what happens if I go up high? Let me see if I can do it again. That's kind of cool to suddenly jump back up high. I think that's what I did. You'll probably correct me because you're paying more attention than I am. When you're watching something back, it's easier to notice what somebody does than when you're actually the one doing it. I'm sure you've noticed that. So you just kind of make yourself a little puzzle. Like after my 16th notes, I'm going to go up high and then work my way back down. Or I'm gonna go low. Let's try that. Well, that was a little wild. I'd probably try it a couple more times and find my favorite kind of version. And that's how I give rise to a, a bunch of my variations, is I, they come from improvisation, where I say, what happens if I go this general direction? And then I find my favorite way in which to go in that general direction. And that is what kind of becomes learned. So if you go to one of my shows right now, I'll probably play this tune because I'm super excited about it and it's really fun. Um, and if you go to three of my shows in a row in which I play this tune, it's gonna be slightly different every time, but I'm starting to really find a, a flow and a pace that I like, like that I told you about always the second time through the tune in the B section, I'll do the take notes out version because that's where I like to do it. We play it through three times in the set that I have this tune in. Um, so it becomes like a, a general blueprint, but the exact notes, I have some ideas, but I'm not really like note to noting it. Like I haven't learned every note that I'm gonna do. So it's nice because you can still surprise yourself. I, I challenge myself every time I perform this tune to do one thing that I haven't done before. Even though it's on stage and people are like watching and caring what I do. I always watch and care what I do, but it's different when other people are doing it. But it's kind of cool to challenge yourself. Just take four eighth notes and do something that you wouldn't expect to hear yourself do. And the worst that can happen is that it sounds a little wild for four eighth notes. That only takes up about mm, maybe two seconds on the clock at this tune, especially if you play it at a clippy tempo, right? That's the worst that can happen. And the best that can happen is you totally surprise yourself and play something glorious that you then spend the next five or six hours after the show trying to remember what was that thing I did because gosh, I want to do it again. <laughs> That's happened to me numerous times. So I totally encourage you to play around with this. You can flip back to my original performance of the tune at the beginning of the video um, and see what I did. I'm probably gonna do that because I'm curious what I did. Steal anything you like and, and play around with all these ideas. Um, it will also help you play around with your other polkas and even seep into your jigs and reels and all that sort of thing. So there you have it. it obviously, this is stuff best done by ear. But if you are one of those people who it really helps to see at least the bass tune written down, um, you can uh, jump onto my website, www.mariblack.com, and subscribe to the newsletter. Um, I send out sheet music as a special bonus for anybody who is subscribed to my newsletter, so if you are a part of that, you will get all current and future tunes of the month coming to your inbox every month. 
And uh, yeah, if that helps you. But you know, improvisation is done by ear, so <laughs> there you go. Um, I hope you guys have fun playing with this and exploring, and I look forward to playing this tune and any others that you know uh, whenever our paths cross in person. Thanks guys, I'll see you next month.